In the light of the lightning, Palyavatarayar saw for a moment the looks of the two people who were standing there and spoke. He saw Ravi Dasan, one of them, twice in his palace. Nandini says that he is good at magic tricks. His brother Kalantaka Kandan is suspicious of this sorcerer and warns him. Another one is Devaralan who danced Velanat in Kadampur Palace. Was it the first time he had seen him? What is his real name? Could it even be? Is he the Paramekyavara who was removed from government office by him a long time ago? So be it, let's hear what they are talking about. Ravi Dasa. You have been saying this for a long time. The day is near, Yaman is near, you are saying, Yaman is near. Yaman is coming and taking someone. But he is not taking Sundara Chola, who has been bedridden for three years. He is afraid of his sons, Yaman is approaching. How many times have we tried? So no offense, father. Yamadharmaraja is smarter than you and me. He has been waiting all this time to take all three on the same day. Tomorrow is going to come. Fortunately, you have arrived here too. You are the right messenger of Yama. Why are you trembling like this? Are you caught in the flood of destruction? You've brought the boat, haven't you? I have, but saving the boat from being blown away by the flood and the wind has become a great task. Where have I been searching for you for so long? Ravi Dasa. You asked why my body trembles, didn't you? Just ahead, I saw Yamadharmaraja face to face. No, no, I saw Yama's brother. So I got really scared. O oh, Paramekyavara. What are you talking about? Yama or his brother? Why are you afraid of them? Shouldn't they be afraid of you? When Ravi Dasan called the other Paramekyavaran, Palyavetarayar snapped. What he suspected was true. He also came to know that he was Yamadharman's brother whom he referred to. His heart and hands throbbed as if he wanted to go near him immediately, grab him by the neck and strangle him to death. And he was patient because he wanted to hear them. They haven't talked about Nandini yet. What is the meaning of the magician saying that Yama is going to come to Sundara Chola's family tomorrow? Does astrology really tell you? Is everything Nandini said about his magical power true? Perhaps if he behaves as ungodly as he claims. His purpose will be easy to accomplish. There will be no need to divide the Chola Empire. But this Paramekyavaran? What does he care about this matter? Yes, yes. Wasn't he the one who vowed to exterminate the Chola clan twenty years ago? Aha! Uh -huh. He is talking about himself. Let's ask what he says. I came here this morning as you told me. But I didn't see you. I wandered all around to see if you had recently retreated somewhere, battered by the wind and rain. There is a small temple near the breach. It looked like someone was lying in it. I went closer to see if it was you who was sleeping. Whom do you think you saw? Sukshed the Great Punisher. The wizard laughed out loud, ha ha ha. Hearing that, the birds living in the forest chirped squeak squeak, the dumb codons growled. Did you see the scumbag? Or did you see his devil? Ravi Dasan asked. No, no devil. I touched the defiled one and turned him over and looked at his face well. Ravi Dasa. Can Yama have two brothers? Can there be a man with the same face, the same mustache, the same scars as Palyavatareya? The man you saw was Palyavatarayan. There is no doubt. Palyavatarayan was crossing the Kalita last evening in a boat. When he reached the shore, the boat was overturned by the wind. The survivors of his entourage are even now searching for Palyavatarayan along the Kalita beach. They suspect that he may have drowned in the flood. I asked. Therefore, the person you saw could be the Avenger. Maybe you saw his dead body, or something. No, no. Do you know the eyelids of a dead person? The one I looked at had his eyes closed tightly. He seemed to be tired and asleep. You fool. What have you done? Did you leave him alone? Shouldn't you have thrown a stone at his head? You don't know about the head of the monster. 
if you throw a stone at his head, the stone will break and crumble to dust. So maybe the flood of looting might have swept him away. Did I say that? When I saw him, it was as if I saw Yama's brother. Even when I danced in front of him in Katapur, my chest kept beating thick, thick. If he recognizes me. Thinking of that, why are you trembling now? As long as he's alive, I'm a little terrified. I'm worried that if we don't do as you say, we'll come back without overturning him in the flood. Don't worry, it is better if the great Palyavatarayan is alive. Only then, after the death of Sundara Chola and his sons, the Chola kings will separate into two factions and fight. The Palyavatarayans and Sambhavarayars will fight from one side, and the Kajumbalar Velan and Thirukovalar Malayaman will fight from the other side. That will be very beneficial to our cause. While they are fighting among themselves we can gather forces secretly in the Pandian country. Ravidasa. You are talking about the story of if your aunt grows a moustache, Sith Appa. If Sundara Chola and his two sons were to die tomorrow, wouldn't the leaders of the Chola nation fight as you said? What is certain that the three men will die tomorrow? Do you know Anus? What are you talking about? Aromas Hivarman is alive in Nagaipatanam. People are surrounding him and clamoring for him to become the emperor of the Chola country. Have you heard? Ravi Dasan laughed again and said, I have not heard it, I know it myself. Who do you think brought Aromas Hivarman out of the Buddha Vihara? It is Rakamal, the daughter of our Rivedasak Gramavathan. She is the wife of Padagatai Muragya. He said. So what? What is the benefit of Aromas Hivarman's appearance? He will always be surrounded by locks of people anymore? Our efforts did not work when he was with two or three people in the country of Ela said Devaralan. Did I say that's good too? When all three of them have to come to Yama on the same day. Ravidasa. How can Yaman approach a prince in the midst of a million people? Didn't you say that? Narungwan, father will approach. Yama will sit at the tip of the elephant's trunk. He will take the prince's life at the right time. Paramekuvara. The people of the Chola country will mount the prince on an elephant and leave the procession towards Tanjavur. The elephant driver will face some danger on the way. In his place will be our Rivedasak Gramavathan the elephant. Will he become a pagan? Guess what will happen then? Ravidasa. I agree that your ingenuity is unmatched. We could have hoped that Gramavathan would complete the task. What about Sundara Chola? What have you arranged for him? Said Devaralan. I have left Saman Sambhavan at the treasury of Bulvetarian. I have left with a weapon in hand. From there a tunnel leads to Sundara Chola's palace. I have pointed out to Saman Sambhava the place where Sundara Chola is lying. Even with a blind person I can stop at the specified spot and kill Sundara Chola. Saman Sambhava don't hurry, wait till tomorrow. I have warned that. What's that for? Isn't it better to finish things when the time comes? Fool! If Sundara Chola were killed earlier, wouldn't his sons be on their guard when they heard the news? What's the use of the sick old man's death? Let it be, what news have you brought? How is everyone at the Kadampur mansion? Isn't what's going to happen there tomorrow night more important than anything else? Everything is going on in Kadampur. There are talk of marriages and love dramas. I don't like you trusting that Palavar Rani. Is she the queen of Bhavur? Say Pandima Devi. Have you forgotten that two days before Veera Pandya's death she made you her consort? Have you forgotten that she vowed to avenge Veera Pandya's death? Didn't she receive the Pandya clan's Veeravala from the hands of Pandya's son at this same place a week ago? Yes, yes. But you must have seen your Pandi Madhavi returning from a pleasure boat pilgrimage in Viranarayana Lake yesterday evening. How can you be happy then? There is no one who has learned the trick of concealing what is in your heart like Nandini. If not, could you have spent three years in Palyavatarayan's palace? Could you have helped us so much while you were there? Yes, did you say you saw Palyavatarayan in the Kalatakare Tekaiyaman temple a while ago? 
I also heard about the capsizing of the ferry. When did Palyavetarayan leave from Kadampur? Why? I don't know for sure why. They said that Madhuranthak Deva had set out to bring him to Kadapur. Yesterday morning Palyavetarayan left. After he left, the princes went hunting. The princesses went to Viranarayana Lake to bathe. If you had seen the joyous sight of the return of the princes and princesses, you would not speak with such confidence. You needn't worry about that one bit. Can you know Pandimadavi's mind since she sent Palyavataraya to Tanjore? Who can know the minds of women? That old man was sent to the town either for revenge or for a romantic drama. What are you talking about, Paramekyavara? Nandini has completely forgotten that old story. She now hates Kari Kalan like poison. I am not talking about Kari Kalan. I am talking about his messenger Vandiyadeva. Do you forget that two or three times Nandini let him escape? The magician laughed merrily and said, Yes, you will soon know why Vandiyadeva is alive. Don't think that you will be the only one who will be surprised when you find out. Many more will be surprised. Mainly, Sundara Chola's rich concubine Kundave will be surprised. To whatever Sukumara Valapan she has lost her heart to, he is the one who killed her Damayan Aditha Kari Kalan. Wouldn't you be surprised to know? He said. What are you saying, Ravi Dasa? Is Vandiyadeva really going to kill Kari Kalan? Has he joined us, or what? Don't ask that now. Whose hand is the hand that kills Kari Kalan? The Pandya clan's fish emblazoned warrior is going to kill him. The vengeance of his slayer is going to fall on Vandiyadeva's head. What are you saying about our queen's skill now? Let everything happen as you say, ask later, I will tell you. Whatever else happens or doesn't happen, Karakalan's spirit is sure to depart by tomorrow night. Nandini will fulfill her responsibility. We must fulfill our responsibility too. What is our responsibility? Tomorrow night we must wait in readiness at the tunnel leading out of the Kadampur mansion. Nandini will come through it when the matter is done. We must take her and reach Koli Hill by nightfall. From there we will watch the Alalakalalam in the Chola country. Perhaps if it is convenient. If convenient, what? All the things stored in the treasure dungeon of the Palavateraya should be taken through the tunnel and added. How appropriate would it be to raise an army to wage war on the Chola country with the things taken from the Chola country's treasury? Ravi Dasan laughed again after saying this. Paramekuvaran, who played the role of Devaralan, said, OK, OK. Don't build the sky fort too big. First we can cross Kaladam and reach Akare and reach Kadampur. Let everything happen in Kadampur as you say. Then we can think about looting the treasure of Palyavetarayan. What do you say? Shall we leave now? Shall we cross Kaladam tonight? He said. No, no. It's enough to get on the boat when it's dawn. By then the wind will subside and the river's flood will subside a little. So, can we sleep in this school hall tonight? Ravi Dasan thought for a while. Then the sound of howling jackals was heard in the distance. Ravi Dasan's body was shaking. Ravi Dasa. Why do you tremble at the voice of the vile foxes? Said Devaralan. Father. You would not have said this if you had been buried up to your neck in the mud of a millionaire, and a hundred jackals stood around waiting to devour you. I hear the lions roar and the religious elephants roar, and I am not afraid. The fox's howl makes the village tremble. Come. Come. Do not spend the night in this burning forest. Dot we will stay somewhere else in a temple or an inn near the village. If not, did you tell us about the Durga temple on the banks of the Kalatok? We will go there. If the old man is still lying there, we can drag him out in the flood. That will be our relief to him. If he is alive till the day after tomorrow, he will be very distressed. The great savior was listening to the aforesaid Sam Pakshana with almost nothing. Every word they spoke was like pouring lead into his ears. His chest seethed like the womb of a great volcano. 
The fact that the woman he had fallen in love with and married had come to take revenge on the Chola clan for Veerapandian's death and that she had been deceiving him for three years caused him unspeakable pain and shame. At that time, Palyavetarayar thought of the established and growing relations between the Chola clan and the Palyavar dynasty for six generations. If you go to see, who are Sundara Chola and his people? Isn't Sundara Chola's grandmother from Palyavar dynasty? Isn't all the anger he felt against Sundara Chola's people recent? How many horrible conspiracies have we allowed because Aditha Karikalan behaved in a childish way and because we don't like Malay Aman? We have allowed the conspirators of the Pandian country, who are the bitter enemies of the Chola clan, to carry out conspiratorial activities against the Chola clan with the stolen goods from our palace and our stable treasure. Aha! Uh -huh. Are there going to be three gruesome murders in three places by tomorrow night as these detectives say? As long as there is breath in our body, we must try and prevent them. There are still sixty hours left. So many things can be done within that time. He should go to Kudan by night and send a message to Tanjore and Nagipatnam and leave for Katapur. We must leave before these evildoers get there. Let them come to Katapur. Isn't it better to kill them right here and leave them? We have no weapons, so what? Why use another weapon when we have hands that can match the Vajrayuta? But they probably have small knives stuck in between. They should be strangled and strangled to death without leaving room to pick them up. But is it advisable to fight with them in this place? I have come to know things that need to be known from them. Durga Parmswari, the family deity whom we worship, capsized the boat and made us know these terrible secrets. Is it not our most important duty to protect the emperor and his sons from harm? In that, it is very important to prevent anything from happening to Kari Gallan in Katapur. If something like that happens, we and our clan will be forever blamed. All the help that the Pavur dynasty has done to the Chola clan for six generations will disappear and turn into dust. If Kari Kalan is killed by a monster that he has brought to our palace, mistaking her for a woman, there is nothing worse that can befall us. Ah! Can such a beautiful form contain such a terrible poison? Could there be so much deceit hidden behind the enchanting smile that enchanted the three worlds? Could it be true what these gossips said just before? The words of the conspirators, which made the fire of anger burn in the heart of Palyavatarayar, gave him some satisfaction in a way. Nandini could be the conspirator. He might have deceived her by pretending to love her. But she did not deceive herself because she was infatuated with Kari Kalan or Kanamaran or Vandiyadeva. She didn't care about those silent boys. She is used to talking to them in order to use them for her private purpose. This news gave little satisfaction to the Palyavatarayar without knowing him too in the privacy of his privacy. To prevent Kari Kalan from being killed was not only to protect his clan's honor and to prevent him from receiving eternal infamy, to save Nandini from such heinous sin. Perhaps even changing her mind is possible. Couldn't she have been an accomplice of these sandal conspirators by no other means? If we kill them here and get rid of them, Nandini can get freedom, right? Thinking like this, the brave old man cleared his throat without realizing it. The sound, like a lion's roar, startled both the conspirators. Who is there? said Paramekuvaran, the king of gods. After that, it was not possible for him to remain hidden and it would not be useful for him to come out as the great destroyer. When the two conspirators were stunned to see the tall figure suddenly appear in the rainy darkness, I am Yama's brother. After saying that, Pula Vetarayar laughed. The sound of that majestic laughter made the entire realm tremble. Both Ravi Dasan and Devaralan tried to run away when they came to know that the person who had come was Palyavatarayar. But Palyavatarayar did not give it space. He stretched out his long arms and caught them both. His right hand is about a puja of Ravi Dasa. The grips of those hands, which were stronger than the Vajrayuta, made both of them cower. Thinking that no matter how much pain in his hand, he could not deal with both of them at the same time, Palyavatarayar pushed Devaralan down so that he fell on the back of his head. The one who fell down placed one leg on his back and started strangling Ravidasan's neck with both hands. 
But Devarala was not idle. He struggled to pick up the knife from his hip and stab it at the foot that was trampling him. The exterminator got to know it. With the other leg he delivered a powerful kick to his wrist. The knife fell far away. One of Devaralan's hands was cut off and became lifeless. But at the same time the foot that was treading on him slipped a little. Devaralan suddenly gave a squirm and came out and jumped up. He started punching the reaper with his non-kicking fist. The punches seemed to fall on a black stone wall. It was Devarala's hand that hurt. It seemed that it would become like another hand. Ravi Dasan, meanwhile, tried hard to free the hands of the reaper from his neck, nothing worked. The old man's iron grip did not loosen at all. Ravi Dasan's eyes started twitching. Gods! Hurry! Hurry! Climb up the temple! Push down the hall! He said. Devarala immediately ran and climbed on the upper hall of the school temple. There was a split in one part of the hall and it was in a position to fall even if it moved a little. They had already noticed it. Devaralan knew that Ravi Dasan was referring to that. He used all his remaining pain to move and push the ruined part of the hall. When it fell, it pushed a tree along with it and fell. Palyavatarayar knew that the upper hall was going to move and fall. He took one hand from Ravi Dasan's neck and tried to hold the mandapam falling from above. Ravi Dasan then tried hard to escape from his grasp and moved away. The tree and the mandapam fell on the reapers. Palyavatarayar fell on his head and lost consciousness.